Yo, what is up everyone back here with another video in today's video I actually want to be going over a topic that I think is very very important It's actually gonna be surrounding the biggest Pokemon tournament that is upcoming within the competitive circuit um, This is gonna be the San Diego regionals San Diego regionals has the most signups that any tournament has had in previous Pokemon history and competitive Pokemon history, of course. Now, I think that this is really important to cover because within, uh, you know, all these tournaments, there are different rule sets. There are different ways they have to adjust the rules given what is in the game. Now, unfortunately, in Scarlet and Violet, there is a missing feature, which I'm going to be getting more into, that is creating issues for the tournament because it can result in a lot of cheating, to be honest, and it can result in a lot of tournament issues. And I hope that it's not the case, but I do want to be addressing those issues in this video and hopefully at least it's you know the right person seeing it and understanding how important that battle box locking is for our game so here's here's what i want to do first i want to break down what is battle box locking okay so essentially within every competitive uh game that we've had i believe since gen 5 there has been a battle battle box locking feature in the game okay so this is from gen 5 Right, so Gen 9 is the first game in four generations to not include this. And I don't think it was not included because uh because they they decided it wasn't important. I think they didn't include it because they didn't have time or they just overlooked it. I don't know what it was. But basically, in generation five, okay, and upward, there is a battle box locking feature that when you lock in a team for a tournament, it is locked. You cannot change the team right? You cannot switch out the Pokemon. You cannot switch out the items. The mons are stuck in that box until the tournament is over and you break that battle box lock, right? Now that is good. That prevents people from changing their teams and that prevents people from, you know, messing with EVs, messing with items. Now that is not in gen nine. That is a huge issue, especially in Scarlet Violet. It's not in the game, which is a huge, huge issue because now there's no guarantee that even if your opponent is using the same items and same Pokemon that they haven't changed, that they haven't changed their EVs, unless you have very specific information. I'm going to be getting more into that. Now, how does this affect the tournament circuit? So their Pokemon ended up deciding that the rule set, or TPCI and uh, TPC, and also, you know, uh, tournament organizer grassroots are going to be enforcing this. The rule is that it's going to be open team list. Now, what does open team list do for the, uh, you know, for everyone in general? So basically... What happens is, is that it allows moves, it allows abilities, and it allows items to show, okay? Now, this is important because it prevents your opponent from being able to change out items in between rounds, it prevents them from being able to change out moves, and it prevents them from being able to obviously mess with abilities, right? They can't have different abilities um, on a case-by-case -case basis, and they will get caught for that, and they will get disqualified, which is good. However, EVs and IVs, their stats are not listed on the sheet. Now... Do I think that having stats listed on a sheet is worse competitively? Absolutely. Do I think it might be necessary at this point until they have battle box locking to ensure integrity? I'm not too sure. I feel like it might be. And I'm going to explain why um, it is such a concern with the EVs and IVs. So first off, they're not listed on the sheet, right? So you can't actually tell if they are using a different... You can't tell if they're using a different, uh, basically, EVs and IVs. And the way that... Uh, it has to be dealt with, especially in a tournament organizer aspect is going to be very difficult. But I want to go into the specific rule set that the tournament organizer for the San Diego regionals put out. That was just like kind of some pre-context so you guys can understand what we're going through. But anyways, so Scarlet Violet information. Before the tournament, make sure you switch as latest updates. That's fine. Choose your Pokemon. You'll select six Pokemon to battle with throughout the event. That's normal too. Register your team. Okay, so this is where you register your team sheet, which is good. This is good because it ensures that you have the open team list submitted and it, the only change now is that they made it that you have to submit by the night before at 8 p.m. on Friday, okay? So the what this mainly has an impact on is that you pretty much are not able to submit your team the morning of anymore. That used to be a feature because BattleBox was there, so it wasn't really a concern. But they have to be able to print out open team lists earlier, which is why you need it in by 8 p.m., right? 
of course, the main benefit, I think, to having, uh, you know, your team list in earlier is that it's less stress in the morning if you forget to give it in. And it is a hard reminder for you to get this in. Right. I do think this could create issues with some players, to be honest, being used to the morning of. But hopefully they are keeping updated on the rules. Hopefully they're maybe seeing this video so they know it is going to be the night before that you have to submit. OK, which is like whatever. That, that's OK. Right. You have to work with the open team sheets. It is the responsibility of the player to ensure that there are no teams with the same six Pokemon that you are using for the event in your party, other battle teams, and rental teams. Okay, so first off, rental teams aren't allowed uh, in the event. That's worth noting. But also, they are asking that you do not have that you do not have a similar team of six in any of your battle boxes or in your party, and probably not in the same box as well, because that would also look really suspicious, right? So. Basically, what they're saying here is that if we see that you have a similar team of six with both Pokemon, right, we will give you a game loss, right? I don't know how they really enforce that. If there's a battle box with a similar Pokemon, like a box over or something, I don't know if they're going to check that. I don't know if they're going to look for that. That could be an issue, too. That could be created right and i hope that they have some plans in place for that because theoretically the loophole to this rule for players would be that then they're just going to keep it in the box and cycle the mons out on the battle box as long as they have the same items but they could have different evs now they do have some plans in place to deal with this and obviously cheating is really bad i do not want anyone to cheat i want i want them to have good ways to deal with this but the issue is, is that you're asking a lot of the tournament organizers to be able to do all this stuff right because then it has that loophole there that people can take advantage of which is why i'm worried so much about like the cheating aspect of it right but anyways um that is something that could potentially happen right uh i hope they update the rules maybe to be like you can't have similar pokemon in the same box or something like that you know um but we'll have to see that anyways Players will initially be seated in alphabetical... This is in the morning. Players will initially be seated in alphabetical order for a player meeting. Find your assigned table number here or on the pairing boards posted in the hall. At all the player meetings, you will be handed your official open team list. This will be the list you share with your opponent at the start of the round. Okay? And it is the responsibility of the players to ensure they do not lose the sheet. Okay? So you are responsible for keeping your own sheet, which is fine. This is this is not a bad bad rule to have, by no means. It's, it's a good thing, you know? Um, and it's definitely a solid way, right, to ensure that everyone has their open team list to share. Now, once the open team list have been distributed, we will post pairings for first round tournament. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yep, the standard double stuff. Now, this aspect is concerning in a different way, okay? So, because we lost the uh, live competition feature that was typically included in the games, it all had battle box locking, but it also had the issue or it resolved the issue for juniors specifically my concern here is with juniors right so for a junior who is just playing the game right they are younger they're going to be you know trying to get into this union circle stuff right so first off you're basically expecting a junior one to know how to host a union circle which again uh, with the older ones it's not really an issue but the younger ones this might present some issues and then player two will join from the union circle and then battles will be held over link battle via the pokey portal so i was and the reason why i bring this up is because i was working with the junior i'm not, obviously i'm not going to say any names but i was working with the junior during one of my coaching sessions and a concern that came up was actually the union circle because they were fairly young and i think that that is something that maybe the judges will have to be there to help the juniors because it could actually give a lot of issues setting up matches especially because you have to jump through into union circle and then you also have to go into the main battling feature so that's definitely some that's a something that could be tricky right now with your switch still docked exit the union circle that's fine right uh now there is one issue with this right so they say once all matches are complete, we will post pairings for next round, blah, blah, blah. This is all normal, but they're going to have random team checks. And this is something that's answered in the frequently asked questions, but it's something that is going to be important to ensure that there is no, you know, team changes or anything besides ones that people detect. Right. And I think that the main thing that, uh, by the way, the, the, the reasoning for this is fine. This is just so you don't get, um, don't get connection issues in the future. I'm just talking more so in terms of like how, um, how it's going to impact, you know, like random team checks and stuff. I think it's the tricky thing is, is if judges don't come over immediately to do a team check, like random team check after the match and they've already like stopped, you know, they've already like, t like got in a union circle. They've maybe changed stuff around. Like 
it's too late to do the random team check unless you're immediately there once the battle finishes, which I would assume is what they're going to try and do, right? So yeah, anyways. Question, why are you requesting no other teams with the same six Pokemon are saved in the battle uh, teams, rental teams? We already talked about this, but basically, as we are unable to lock battle teams, we request this for ease of team checking, right? So this is a reasonable rule, I think, on their end. I think once you get into the realm of and not having the same kind of Pokemon in boxes, that gets a little bit difficult. Um, and I'm curious to see how they deal with that because that's actually a huge issue. I really just hope they incorporate battle box locking, though, honestly. Um, what are the penalties if a similar team is saved in the battle team rental team? This may be treated as a major team error could result in a, uh, you know, game loss or disqualification. This is really bad. So make sure you haven't done this for those of you who are this year first tournament. Please, please, please make sure that you do not have a similar team in your battle box. This will get you in trouble. So don't do that. Um, you know, and I know that it, it could be a genuine mistake from someone where they just like leave a similar team or the first version of their team with similar items um and you know evs in the thing and you can't do anything about that if i believe someone is using a team different to the list provided what should i do so i actually am going to talk a little bit more about this and give you guys some important warning signs to look out for that your opponent may be using something different okay so you raise your hand and continue your match by the way judge will come over and review any concerns you have so there are a couple of big telltale signs that your opponent has changed your sheet or like they've changed their evs or they've changed something about their team okay first off if the pokemon on the opposing side has a different gender than what they originally had now this doesn't apply for no gender pokemon obviously but let's say for example they had a male satitan and then in the next game they have a female satitan that's a big red flag you instantly call a judge for that right so always 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 look at your opponent's team list look at their opposing uh genders on their pokemon to make sure that there are no issues there now gender obviously won't tell you if like they have the same gender pokemon that they can just like cycle in you won't know that but there's a second way to actually um really tell if they're using something different so let's say game one right um, you are using an adamant Garchomp at 154 base speed, okay? And they have a Hydreigon that underspeeds you and Draco Meteors after your Garchomp. If that Hydreigon, excuse me, if that Hydreigon outspeeds you and goes for a uh, Draco Meteor first before your Garchomp next game, you know that they changed the speed tier, right? Now, that's obviously a very obvious example. Technically, there are more ways you could tell with like damage rolls, EVs. And if you know enough about that and you're very like knowledgeable in that, then that might be worth like following up with the judge. I, my only recommendation is don't just call a judge to call a judge because these tournament organizers are going to be worked like a lot in this tournament. This is going to be a hard tournament to TO, especially for VGC, because there is no team locking, right? That is that is really hard to enforce. So it's going to be really difficult on them. So I wouldn't just call a judge to call a judge. You know, you have to do it when you have reasonable doubt and suspicion. I'm not saying everyone's going to cheat. It's just this is stuff you have to know for this tournament, right? Now, down here, okay, um, when will I see, uh, receive my opponent's team sheets, right? So you swap team sheets when both players are sat down and ready to begin the match. Once the match is finished, you return team sheets to its owner. For this reason, you are not allowed to make notes on team sheets. So theoretically, this rule, this rule is good in concept, but... If someone just has a really good memory and then they just go into their like chat with their friends and drop all the info on the teams, it's not really like it's not really a positive, you know, um, because then they could just theoretically have the open sheets of everyone else. And then whoever had your open sheet, like they remember for themselves. But that's it right now. Um, it does it does mean that like it could actually be really annoying again with friend groups like having information and sharing it among each other which has been an issue in Pokemon before even in close sheet I think that they really need to make it so that when you give in open sheets they make it available online for everyone to view everyone's sheet so that way it's not like a game of like information because if you're giving it five minutes before and someone is just has a good memory and they remember it like that's giving an unfair advantage to like friend groups who can like track that information i honestly really think that i don't know if they can do it for this regional because obviously logistics are a little you know like crazy with the first regional but like they really need to make these team sheets available online for future events um so it's even between all players i think that's a big concern on my end now what if players are using a level one Pokemon which can hide EVs, IVs? So this one's less less bad because like it's not like I mean obviously if you're cheating that's bad, right? But um it's not like most of the time they're saying like as long as you're not cheating, right? Um we're we're gonna have to spend more time checking your stats, right? Because level one does hide your stats and it's just annoying for judges. Like why extend the tournament more than you need to? Like just listen to them here. Don't use level one Pokemon. Just use level fifty Pokemon or like whatever minimum level you can use for the pokemon you're using right i think level 50 and level 100 are easiest to verify now why is it recommended to set 
the switch into airplane slash flight mode. So this is just a connectivity thing. Uh, just, yeah, just do this. Just listen to them here. Um, why are battles held over Union Circle? So they explain why they're using Union Circle. I'm just concerned about how complicated it's going to be for like Junior specifically, but like for everyone else, it should be fine, right? It's just a little bit more tedious. This helps pair the correct devices, which also reduces the chances of being banned from online services in case of disconnection, right? So that's not a bad thing. Uh, that's, that's solid. Why must I exit Union Circle before undocking my Nintendo Switch? This will ensure the game does not register the disconnection as malicious. So again, just a logical reason, you know, for that. And then obviously you need an online Switch membership, okay? So that's all the rules that we've gone through. Now, I just wanted to give my final thoughts here. This, so basically the tournament organizers, I want to clarify, are doing the best they can. And I would actually follow them and keep updated. And I want to clarify, this is not a tournament organizer problem. This is not a TPC problem. And this is not a TPCI problem. This is a fundamental Scarlet and Violet game issue. This is a feature that's not in the game that needs to be included in the game. And I hope that they make the decision to include it going forward. Because this is going to make it really tough for all of competitive Pokemon to really manage this going into future events. And I can only hope that they will that they will include that feature going forward. If not, then it's going to probably force some more rule changes to prevent cheating, which is going to be worse overall for the spirit and integrity of the game, right? Um, now, uh, obviously, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, obviously, this isn't their fault. It's not TPC's fault. It's not TPCI's fault. And I actually want to give a specific thank you to them for doing their best they can with the current rule set. Like you're, like literally, they're doing the best they can. Uh, they they don't really have better options here. You know, the only thing that I uh, think was worth criticizing a little bit or giving constructive criticism for was having open team sheets available online for everyone to see, because because it's giving an unfair advantage to player groups. But besides that, I think they've handled it really well, all things considered. Now, um, obviously, I'll link the uh, tournament rules and I'll link the Twitter of the organizers down there. Um, definitely don't come after them. Uh, make sure to, I, if anything, be supportive of them. This is going to be a really cool event and I'm looking forward to it. I just obviously have these concerns because, you know, uh, obviously I know uh, enough about this game where I could see like how it could go wrong. But as always, guys, thank you so much for supporting the video. Let me know if you guys enjoy videos like this. Uh, I think it's good to talk about these things. And hopefully even someone from one of these groups that I was just talking about, TPC, TPCI, um, Team Northwest, they can see this video and actually get some, you know, uh, ideas maybe for rules or just like understanding like how they want to implement stuff. And uh, thank you guys, all of you, um, you know, all those groups for putting in work in the game and really trying to do the best you can. Uh, I do. I do appreciate it. And I think it is worth saying thank you to them because they have put in a lot of work. As always, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, make sure to check out, you know, the links down below, everything else. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting the video. Peace.